Hello guys, Preston here, and in this video, I am going to bring you guys a new meta patch update for patch 14.2. In this picture here, I'm going to have basically everything that is playable or like that I've seen played in my, my challenger game so far. I spammed a lot of games this patch so far, and this is like roughly just about like what everything that I see for the most part. I'm not going to go over every single comp that is shown here, specifically the ones that were really popular last patch that don't really need much of an explanation as well as like ones that I already explained in my previous video that like haven't really changed. And to point those out, that is going to be Riven, um, Yone, Diego, Akali, and Karthus. I put True Damage Akali here just because I think True Damage is a lot stronger than it was last patch, or True Damage Akali. And that that's another variation with a uh, Viego Karthus, so I will be going over that. I will not be going over the super fan Viego, Karthus, and Akali because I go over that in my last video. Okay, to start off, um, a new one cost reroll has sort of taken the spotlight, done really well in the stats since day one of the patch, and it is Jinx reroll. The main focus on Jinx reroll is you are hitting number one for punk at the minimum. Ideally, if you can six punk, that but that requires punk chosen as well as punk's path, which is extremely hard to get to. I mean, it's not extremely hard. You just need a punk emblem. But if you are not planning around a punk emblem, usually rapid fire jinx is a lot better in the stats than punk jinx. And basically what you're looking for with this comp is the main front line. If you're not six punk is four guardian. You are basically playing around four guardian. And here I basically highlighted the core of the comp which is Pantheon and Jinx, Pantheon, Jinx, and Amumu. Um, you have the option to reroll Senna as well. You can reroll Twitch. You can reroll Pantheon and Amumu. Eventually, you want to just get into four. You just want to be four Guardian at some point. Eventually, this turns into Thresh. And this is essentially like what your board is going to look like. You roll on five for this comp. You can also roll on six if you need to for things such as Pantheon and Twitch. You really want to get a three-star frontline with this Jinx to pair with it. The focus of this comp is, is basically just Guardians with a ramping backline. Jinx got a... I got multiple buffs in the last patch or in this most re previous patch. She gained, if I recall cor uh, correctly, it's she gained five AD as well as Punk getting an upgrade or a buff. And there are a couple of different vari variations that you can play this comp. Um, there is four Guardian, four Punk. There is six Punk where you just play this with a Punk Emblem plus Punk Chosen. Main thing you want to hit is four Punk. If you have Ramping Rhythm, which is a really strong augment for this comp, you can even play four Rapid Fire. Instead of going four Guardian, you can go like four Rapid Fire, four Punk. Yeah, you just reroll uh, Jinx, Senna, and Aphelios. Ideally, you have Rapid Fire chosen. In my games, personally, I see this come up or this comp come up quite often. I never, I honestly have never seen this win. I think in lower elos, this comp will do really well just because it's a one dollar, a one cost reroll. It's like the tempo of the comp is really strong in lower ranked games. But in my challenger game so far, I've seen this uh, like a fair amount and I've never seen it win. It seems to be like a, a capped to like third, some sometimes second, most likely third. The main items are Rage Blade, Last Whisper, and Runons. You don't really need Rage Blade if you have Ramping Rhythm. You can substitute Rage Blade out for anything else, like like Giant Slayer, if you have Ramping Rhythm. Onto the augments for headliners, it shows Rapid Fire, outperforms Punk headliner. Not really much of a surprise here for augments. We'll start off with silver. The best silver augments are shown here. Bulk, unified, best friends. I will exclude young modern free just because this is like a, this will always be good in the stash just because you only take it from good spots. Spoils, component buffet, stationary support, iron assets, blistering, just like lots of the generic silver augments. There's not too much um, of an outlier in the silver augments for this comp. Onto the gold. Heavy headers are strong. A cut above. She does well with death blade. Teaming up, unified, twin terror, spoils of war, best friends, stationary, salvage bin. I would say salvage bin is like um like a scaling scaling augment. It scales with player. Extended play. Extended play is good. Lucky streak is good on her. Know your enemy. Epitaph. Vampirism. Crown guarded. Slide of hand. Oh, Ramping rhythm is down here. As for the prismatics, twin terror, final ascension, binary, buried treasures, Pandora's lucky gloves, stationary, blinding speed, roll the dice. Uh, there aren't really like many augments that like stick out for this comp or sort of like an outlier. I think the really generic combat augments are really good in this comp as well as uh, the rule augment, heavy hitters in specific, twin terror. Twin terror, punk rule has always been sort of like a thing. This comp is a comp that started seeing a little bit more popularity at the, near like towards the end of last patch. I think I did mention in like my, my openers video. Uh, basically bard kaiser roll the main focus is bard reroll ideally you want to jazz bard headliner that is the best one for sure in this comp i feel like this is a niche comp i wouldn't angle this comp like right off the bat of any game i think there are sort of conditions that like are required for you to do well or like to put you see yourself in a good spot for this comp and then for the most part that is um march of progress in my opinion i think march of pro this comp is mostly in a march of progress check it requires a lot of money uh, the tempo of March of Progress is really good because you want to roll on six and you want to roll on seven as well. So you basically get to spike at 
a lot of early intervals with this comp. The main focus is Bard and Kaisa. If you can, it's not MF. Uh, MF is not honestly not very good. If you can 3-star one of the front lines, uh, you go for it. You just basically just take whichever one you can. Nico, Echo, anything works. Bard, this is adaptive, adaptive death cap. Red buff, IE for Kaisa. You can go like GS, DB, blue buff, anything after that. And yeah, basically you just roll on six for one of the headliners. Eventually you want to go with seven. Your you, this comp spikes really hard on level seven because it plays around two jazz with a lot of synergies. So if you can, you want to roll on six, find the headliner. If you're really close to the headliner, you just stay six, roll for it. Uh, otherwise you go seven in a roll and onto the augments. And I will start with silver. Again, really generic augments that are really generic silver augments that do well with in basically every single comp. The string strikes, rolling for days is good uh, because of the times that you get it, which is basically 3-2. And this is a comp that spikes on 3-2 as well as looking to spike on level 7. Empirism, bulk, harm assist, or gold spoils, buried, infusion. I'm actually kind of surprised infusion does that well in this comp. I did not, I actually did not think infusion was that, like, that big of a, a game changer for this comp. That's Jazz Baby, obviously. That's Jazz's, oh, this is, I guess, like another, like, check mark, like, that, like, a, like a go for this comp. I, it's 2-1 Jazz, that's Jazz Baby, or 2-1 March of Progress. Last Stand is a win out augment. Know your enemy, trade sector, return on investment. Return on investment is, is good in this comp because it, it basically revolves around Jazz. And as you know, like the way Jazz works, any plus ones you can get is really strong. This comp has a lot of strong plus ones. Eventually, you want to play Ziggs and Lucian. And at this point, if you have four Jazz with all of these traits, I don't know what the exact number is. It's 4% four, 4 HP, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight, nine there's nine so nine times four that's 36 36 percent extra health for your entire team which is a lot this comp is a super scaling comp just because if you are able to get the nine with uh lucian and lucian and ziggs more times than not you win out just because at, like at that point it's like you're like, you're playing on four jazz four jazz is an extremely strong trait right now this is another comp this comp saw some play at the beginning of this at uh, the beginning of the set but with this patch, Kyrie got buffed. So I've been seeing this a lot more in my comps, uh, in my games. I personally have not seen this really win at all. I see a lot of people play towards this. I see it do well on stage three and four. I see it bleed out to like roughly like a three, typically like around like the third, third to fourth range. I haven't seen this comp win. It's usually around like two to like, not that often is it two, more so three, but it can go two. Oh, it can't go second. More so like three to four to five uh, for this comp. And basically what this is, this Katarina's super fan item is Hand of Justice. So basically you only need like one jewel gauntlet and one jewel, uh, Hand of Justice. This is the Katarina Abyss double double jewel gauntlet here. And what you're looking for this comp is ideally you want Crowd Diver chosen. Country chosen doesn't really do that much. And you're basically playing around super fan with Katarina. And as you level up, you basically just push more crowd divers here and here. Eventually it's six crowd diver. If you can, you're willing to take out like, say like Echo, if you can afford the front line, if you don't need the, the super fan anymore, you have a third item, you can take out one of the super fans, keep Echo. Echo is better front line. Basically you, there are a bunch of different ways that you can upgrade this board. Like so you get country, country chosen. You can run like Zach Kench, even Thresh Nico with thingy for mid game. Like I said, Kennen keep super fan. Basically, the main focus of this comp is you reroll Katarina. You play around super fan early, and eventually you want to drop out of super fan just because super fan units cap really low. But that's like sort of like an end game thing. Super fan is super efficient for this comp or how cheap it is, and you basically just want to push crowd divers. Eventually, you want to secondary carry Z B T G A G S is his bis, and she want to if you can, you want to get to. Uh, like player on Z. That's basically it for this comp. Onto the augments for this comp. One, two, threes, EXP, Empirism, Harmasis, Pandoras. Just because I, I Pandoras are good just because it's like the comp kind of requires specific items. I do not think I, I wouldn't say Karina's items are really flexible at all. I don't think her items are really that flexible. Long distance pals, martyr, vampirism, teaming up, patient study, idealism, gifts of the fallen. Oh, gold gold for gold. I was wondering why this was here. Uplink, stationary supports, jeweled lotus, heavy hitters, learning to spell, not today. Uh, one thing that I did notice, uh, like uh, like looking at the stats for units within this area, basically specifically crowd divers, is that long distance pals is seems to be a really strong augment with crowd divers. Uh, it's extremely strong in Yone. It's one thing that I noticed. Idealism, you get a full Hodge, increased damage on the Hodge. Idealism works on your, your super fan Hodge as well. If you have Hodge on someone else and you only have super fan Hodge on Katarina, that works as well. Prismatic, Joel Lotus 3. No surprise, it's just a lot of damage. Crowd Divers are really bursty. Crowd Divers are looking to like end the fight within like the first like 10 seconds of the fight. Like honestly, like if you can. Hologram, Freaky Friday, Stationary Support, Uplink, Egg, Armacist, Fairy Treasures. On to the 
Next comp. This is another unit that got buffed this patch, Kale. She has seen a lot more attention this patch. Uh, I think she was strong last patch as a, sort of like an item holder, but like they reworked basically the way how, how her spell works. If you don't know, before her mana bar was 30 and every time she got to 30, she would have like five seconds of empowered autos. And I think five seconds and at the end she would have like a giant blast. Now it got changed to 120 and the empowered autos are permanent. And at the end of the 120 is when you get the giant blast. Her bis is Rageblade, Archangel's Gunblade. Her superfan item is Rageblade, which is why I included superfan here. Superfan, basically, like, Kel has turned, last patch she wasn't a Rageblade user, but like this patch she turned into a Rageblade re user with her rework. Basically, what you're looking for here is, ideally you want Kale and more guys are chosen, you roll for Kale chosen on level six, and eventually you push for level seven. Here, I can show you the board on level six. Like, this is fine. You can just go for superfan. Uh, you can go, honestly, it's probably just for superfan. For superfan, Kale, level six something like this and eventually you want to hit kale uh kale chosen and you just push levels or you push level to level seven and just keep rolling if you can because you also want you basically the win counter for this comp is also mordekaiser three i've seen this comp do well i think i've seen it win a couple times like the tempo of this comp is with the way the patch is right now like lots of these comps don't really win out that much just because of a problem in the patch right now which is hard steel it's really hard to outcap hard steel. So typically if you are winning with one of these uh, like lower cost rural comps, your tempo for the comp is way above pacing. I think like you hit like super early and yeah, basically what you're looking for this is as you push levels, you just add in the, the stronger pentakills, take out this guy or right, the cannon here. If you have pentakill chosen, you just go seven penta on eight. If you can, there's also edge lord. If you have edge lord chosen, you just go five penta three edge lord plus one. Like this is your level seven. Ideally you have plus one edge lord here. You can just go and then you go this girl, Akali. So it looks like plus one edge lord plus one chosen. It would be two out of three out of three edge lord. Uh, if you have penta chosen, honestly, if you have penta chosen, you just stay like this anyways. Uh, it's five out of six. Eventually you want to push for seven if you can. The three edge lord is not like that big of a deal. And it's the units on your board are not worth dropping for three edge lord. Diego and Akarthus are not worth dropping in this comp for to run like a like a like an garbage edge lord edge lord. Ideally, the only edge lord you want to play is Kane. But like if you need to, you can play uh Yone and Riven. Just know that it's like edge three edge lord is not that big of a deal on Kale. Like the attack speed is nice, but it's like you you are playing on Rage Blade as well. So it's like you do have a lot of uh attack speed already like in built into your kit as well as I'm pretty sure chosen kale headliner is oh yeah chosen kale headliner effect is 25% extra attack speed so the three edge lord is not like a, like a mandatory trait uh, eventually you want to cap it out ideally if you have like the option two you want to go seven penta kill every single time that you can or kaiser three if you can sometimes lots of times water kaiser is really contested karthus viego kali is really strong this patch and yeah onto the augments or a silver vampirism spoils of war one two threes harmonsist Healing orbs, blistering. I think you've noticed like a, a, it's pretty easy to notice a trend amongst like all the essentially all the silvers so far that we've looked at. Basically, like the strong combat silver augments are there. As all the strong econ silver augments are always at the top for basically any single comp. Silver augments don't really have or like impact too much compared to other augments. Long distance pals, martyr, remembering your roots, inspiring epitaph, vampirism, spoils of war, harmless stationary. These are all very good. Headliner, pentacle headliner has a higher average placement just because you usually cap higher. Uh, having access to seven penta onto this next comp it is executioners samira and vex i oh I, I think i forgot to mention in the initial page uh when i was looking when i showed all the the thingies i am also not going to go over samira i have the this i put for samira here is country samira i'm not going to go over country samira because i talked about that in my last video as well as country samira has sort of been like a staple for uh, quite a while now so more likely than not you already know what it is uh, this version of Samira, a Samira Vex, a Samira Vex Amumu sort of was brought to light more towards like the end of last patch. It didn't really see that much attention at the beginning. Uh, people didn't really play it that much, but like as it got closer to the end of the patch, like a lot more people started playing vertical executioners. And basically the main focus of this comp is a Mumu with uh, ideally one gargoyle if you can. Basically like your front line is not very that good in this comp. Uh, I think the best items in this comp are blue buff death cap gunblade vex. Gunblade on vex 3 is extremely important. And the reason you position like this is because you have this guy here. He does lots of AOE damage that have some wrap around here with your Vex usually matched up with your Mumu. And as they wrap around here, the way the Vex ability works, it's like a little AOE. You just cast on one unit that explodes like three other units. And you basically just with six execution, you have a lot of damage Like with the Gargoyle. Like Gunblade Gargoyle synergizes really well with each other. Like each blast sort of like heals Mumu for a large portion. And that's basically like how the, like this comp basically functions. Samira and Vex, ideally you want to three star all three of these. When you have six execution, 
executioner you don't really need I infinity edge you already have enough crit so you'd rather go like other items the downside of six executioner for some a unit like samira compared to country is that country gives built-in healing where executioner samira does not so you do want to build some healing on your carries somehow or they will die to like, a lot of splash damage that just hits your back line that's about it for this comp ideally level seven you just roll for uh you, you you'll take either vex chosen or samira chosen you just basically just want executioner chosen if you can yeah you just rule for the three of these or the three of these guys your level eight is usually just like another guardian like thresh most likely you can you get if you get an allowee you can just play a random allowee so you can never go wrong with just putting an allowee in even no synergy allowee put the augments starting off with silver spoil his best friends silver veil component buffet teaming up vampirisms blistering armistice for gold uh it says twin terror i don't really count twin terror honestly because i have six executioner filtered and if you get the six executioner with twin terror that's more likely than not assuming that you already three starred these units as well as you are pushing i think with twin terror if you twin terror two units that you need to be level nine for six executioner so i don't really count twin terror stats for this so we'll ignore that one a cut above idealism lucky streak explodes a war portable forge Explosive wings is extremely extremely good in this comp especially if you don't have uh, any stride built it gives you a lot more flexibility with your items if you get offered this augment on 2-1, I will, depending on your spot, I more most likely will take this augment and I will just tunnel onto 6 Executioner. Variation of Samira Vex, Best Friends, 3 to Crowd, Healing Orbs, Empirism, Big Grab Bag, Portable Forge, Stationary, Return on Investment, Smatic, Hologram, I did not think Hologram was that good, Odin Egg, Overwhelming Support, March of Progress, March of Progress is extremely good in this comp, this comp requires a lot of money, Arcana, Very Treasures, uh, I guess like one trend that you notice like with the prismatic augments is that like this comp can use a lot of items Which is why overwhelming force and unleash arcana buried treasures it, uh, does really well in the stats for this comp as well as like this comp uses a lot of money So which is by march of progress. It's a heavy pretty heavy is an extremely heavy rural comp We'll pack stationary harmonist roll the dice binary on to the next one This is a comp that got like really little attention with the buff this patch uh, I've, I've seen this comp win this comp win a lot as well It's sort of hard to like get to this point if you play play over yourself You'll see like why it's sort of hard to get to this point There are like sort of certain augments in this comp that basically push it towards the top It's basically loot reroll and you basically go for echo or or nico 3 whichever one you can get you just itemize The super fan item is shoujin. So ideally you want blue buff shoujin death cap Uh, basically how lulu works if she has too much attack speed after her first cast will not gain mana Which kind of sucks. I know yeah, which is that's partly due to why like her this is like this with blue buff and shoujin She only needs two autos for the next cast I, I think if you say like if the bug didn't like so if you had like shoujin nasher's death cap It'll take three autos after the cast but the thing is with Nashers, you have too much attack speed. The first auto after your cast, you will not gain any mana. So it will it will take four autos to get to itself for the next cast. Which is why you usually just skip out on Nashers if you can and you just go blue buff. This is a level seven reroll comp or just looking for a super fan. Lulu, you hit three spell weaver, your five spell weaver with just Ari. If you have chosen hyper pop, it's fine. You just still four spell weaver and eventually you level for a, another spell weaver. Basically, what you're looking for this comp is just focus on around like this core and you just add in like whatever you need slash whatever makes sense like sona if you can or five spell weaver if you have two hyper pop you have five chosen spell weaver you have five uh your level eight can be like simply a zigs two hyper pop you just have uh have them buff each other mainly you just want like to get more buffs on lulu and ari not really you don't really care that much about seraphine uh zigs also to, uh provide shred as well now onto the augments for this comp for silver item grab back component buffet cyberneck bulk pandora healing orbs rolling for days harmonist blistering uplink uplink one vampirism gold remembering your roots remembering your roots is really good in like any like it's really good in seraphine reroll uh sort of like basically just like the kda like the kda lines like the lines where you like play like lots of verticals where it's like basically this is a kda kda slash spell weaver uh remembering your roots is good i stand went out augment uh portable forge is really high i can show diamond hands mana zane lulu seems to be good trickster glass lulu is really good the reason why is because you just have, you basically have two lulus right next to each other and they just go pum 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 and like when when they do that uh, they give each other hyper pop, which is like the main thing. You're basically just looking at 100% uptime on hyper pop with each other. I mean, Empirism, Spoils of War, Twin Lotus, Contagion, Epitaph. Twin Terror is a, this is sort of like a new comp. Like the new go-to Twin Terror for this for this patch is Twin Terror Lulu. I can show it here. It's basically, it's your level seven. You see another Lulu. That's about it. Ari for this girl. And yeah, it's basically the thing that I was talking about. It's like, it's basically the same thing as Trickster Glass. You just have two Lulus, you just buff each other. They just go pew, 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 pew. For the best performing augment in Prismatic for this comp is Hologram. You are offered Hologram on any point while you're leaning towards the loot, you average extremely well. And again, it's the exact same thing. It's the exact same thing as Twin Terror. Like, you know, a little body, pew, 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 you just 
Hyper pop each other as well as Trickster Gloss. Binary good. Uh, Jeweled Lotus 3 good. Twin Terror 3 good. March of Progress good. Need lots of money. Stationary good. Buried Treasures good. New Recruit. Lucky Gloves. All these augments are good. On to the next. Uh, again, I mentioned it earlier, but I'll mention it again. I'm not going to go over the KDA Kali variation. I'm going to go over the True Damage Kali variation. You see, True Damage Kali, ideally you want Pentak Pentakill Emblem. But it's like sometimes you like you can't get the Pentacle Emblem, uh, and your items are better for Viego slash Akali. True Damage Akali, like the way this work, uh, comp works, is it's more so focused around Viego and Akali synergy. Viego marks up the entire like front line, and Akali just like sort of cleaves them down, and this does really well. The other version, KDA Akali, is more so just like a calling Karthus. Like they jump to the back line, they snipe back line units. Uh, this version is more so Viego, and you basically this is your core seven, and you your plus one is basically depending on what you. You hit say you hit pentakill chosen boom seven pentakill you just added you just jam in another pentakill yorick olaf seven penta you get a, a executioner chosen five penta four executioner boom you get edgelord chosen you just play whatever anything that makes sense and i'm allowing you find one boom five your your five penta five penta three edgelord plus plus whatever plus one if you have penta emblem if you have penta emblem you try to lean akali very heavily um, I do think this true damage version is better than the KDA version. So if I have the option to, if I have Penta Emblem, I will always, I will try to lean true damage Kali. Honestly, it more so depends on your items, but it's like if you have the itemization for it, I do think this version is better. Ideally, you always prioritize itemization, itemization on Viego and Akali gets your extra stuff. Like since they share, like as you can see, like they share pretty similar items. If you have the choice to, it's Viego over Akali. Viego is extremely good. And yeah, AP items and Karthus. If you have Pentacle Emblem, you just go 7 Penta 100% uh, of the time. I talked about Executioner Chosen. Oh, tr if you have True Damage Chosen, you just go boom. Just go for True Damage. I talked about Executioner, talked about Penta and True Damage. This is a super staple of this patch. You should be playing towards Viego, Karthus, Akali a lot. This patch, as, if, as a default, if you do default to level... Level 8 comps, and yeah, onto the augments. Uh, Vampirism, Blistering, Indomitable, Harm Assist. Yeah, I guess you can notice it through the gold augments, but it's just like this comp. This comp does really, really well with healing. Vampirism, Idealism, uh, Healing Orbs, Harm Assist. Yeah, any sort of like healing augment this comp does really, really well with. The reason why is because it's like uh, eventually you you have three people that you you can itemize. Akali, Karthus, and Viego. So it's like uh, like they, like they the, you have two drain tanks sort of. So it's like you really want healing if you can in this comp. Uh, healing augments are really good. Armoring your roots is really good in any vertical comp. It's got, this comp plays vertical penta. Lucky Gloves is really good. Uh, you need a lot of items, but it's really hard to itemize everyone. Harm is three. Really good. Pandora's New Recruit, Radiant Relics, Binary, and Jeweled Lotus. All really good. The generic combat augments. The, like, the, like, yeah, like, as I just mentioned, like, the biggest trend from the augments from this setup is basically just healing augments. Comp does extremely well with healing augments. On to the next is sort of Ezreal, Ezreal Zed. I think Ezreal Zed synergize really well with each other. Ezreal does, like, the, like, the fat damage to lots of units. Zed is the single target demon as well as the cleanup from everyone getting low for Ezreal. This is, in my opinion, the strongest comp in the game right now. And the reason why for that is because of the flexibility with Heartsteel. The Heartsteel trait right now is extremely, extremely broken. If you have lots of HP and you're in a position to play on Heartsteel on stage four, ideally five, more times than not, your average placement is roughly around two or higher, or like 2.5 or higher, just because of the heart steel that you can like like just the heart steel loot tables are extremely extremely broken if you pivot into this from like strong strong position going to stage four you have a lot of hp to work with you just play five heart steel for stage four and your win con is five heart steel and eventually you pivot into some variation of like this board where it's like you just main focus is at least two big shot uh, at least two crowd diver uh solid front line the best front line for ezra zed is bruisers slash poppy Bruiser slash Poppy is better than Guardians and better than Sentinels for this comp. And you just cap around Jazz. This is like the, the sort of the staple, a like staple slash default. As you go nine, you can add Lucian. Yeah, like there were three Jazz. You can just like, you sort of just like fill out whatever you whatever you need. Like if you don't find Lucian, boom, six. That's a double trait for two Jazz. Alawi, don't add Poppy. You can just go like, boom. If your front line is good enough. Uh, you have a lot of Jazz. So you have like lots of HP from th through this. If not, you basically are just looking for a bunch of different ways. It's called AD Flex. And the reason why it's like, like, I guess Ezra's not really flexible because it's like Caitlyn's not really clickable. She is in dire need of a buff. But it's more so it's just you flex like a bunch of different little outs that propel your board to push you towards a win. So it's like I'm gonna like like there are it's hard to like show you how like all these units can play into the board. 
but honestly like all these units can or it's hard to show like every single way but like literally all these units can play into the board and put you into a strong position to win it's basically you just flex around it's playing ezreal slash with another carry and you just flex around like the little like the little legendaries that spike your board the main focus is you just play around jazz you need at least two big shots and you're just pushing through a lot of traits with jazz if you can as many traits as you can with jazz in this comp the reason why this comp is the best in the game right now is just because you play on hard steel units and you just cap super hard super high like going for multiple a bunch of different high uh hard steel cash outs as well as like high hard steel cash outs like if you're if you say you get like one loss on stage five with five hard steel is like what like at least like 100 stacks for one round which is like insane and uh, yeah just like the highest cap comp in the patch right now because of the hard seal trait and how easy it is to work around the hard seal trait slash just play around three hard seal the entire game best augments for this comp stim pack help is on the way stationary support this comp does really well with support items um vampirism like uh, this comp sort of like any like sort of like the win out augments as well as like spike later augments get more, like more value for your buck later augments so do really well in this just because it's a win out comp like win out a comp with the hard steel which is like for example stim pack stationary support you were stacking early game you spike later help is on the way exact same exact same thing tiny titans more heart still cash vampirism exact same thing trappy inventions vampirism last stand combat caster pumping up salvage bin long distance you have my sword gifts Zanic, binary caretaker freaky friday tiniest titan bulk living forge short lotus Lucky gloves. Another thing you probably know is like this comp uses a lot of items. Uh, going back to here, you can itemize Ezreal, you can itemize Zed, you can itemize Poppy, you can itemize like a like a more normal level eight board. I'll I'll give you one Lucian. Give you guys one Lucian. You found a Lucian on eight. This comp can use a lot of items. Zed Zed three items, Ezreal three items, Poppy three items, Zack three items, as well as Lucian items. Set you you can even set items like he's just he's probably one of the best three costs in the game always has been and always will be like this comp just uses a lot of items it's like binary as well as well as like the fact that you like running hard steel which makes binary even better because you can just farm a bunch of random components that just lead you to an extra extra binary proc on on anyone onto the last comp of the patch like everyone has known about this comp since like beginning of the set you see and it's vertical kda uh kda re uh, kda re kda kali duo i don't see this comp that often but i it's impossible not to it's like it's i think it'd be wrong to not mention this just because how well these units are doing in the stats in specific with each other and the main the one that like the best variation of the of this comp is 7 kda ideally you have kda chosen and this is your level 8 you just jam in a kaisa you just jam in a kaisa you just play around 7 kda 3 spellweaver uh super fan this has basically been a comp since like the beginning of the beginning of the set uh, i don't think there's too much explanation that needs to be done for this comp if you don't get kda chosen you get spellweaver chosen here uh, that's fine you just go another spellweaver lulu uh, five KDA, five spell weaver. That is exactly that's more than fine. That's good. Move off. Uh, this is about it. Your executioner chosen. You are just looking for anything that you can fit in. Any sort of quality unit. You just run five KDA or a spell, and it's fine. I don't know. There's not too much to explain about this comp. This comp's been here for a while. I guess like the main focus of this comp is just super fan slash KDA. Ari super fan item is death cap. A colleague super fan item is hand of justice. Death cap is a million times better now. This patch. In fact, it's probably one of the best items in the game in terms of power, like th power through numbers wise. This death cap just provides so much power for for the item onto the augments. Here for silver, misconnections, spoils of war, misconnections. I can I it's I can see that it's because it, uh, this comp requires a lot of one cost. Oftentimes you do have trouble upgrading one cost like one cost. So it's like like Kenan, Lilia. Like this is helps out a lot too. It's also an econ augment. This misconnection gives a lot, a lot of econ while being for a level while being a level eight comp. As well as a war, stationary, iron assets. Uh Yamato Free is a fake stat. Bulk cutting corners, empirism, uplink, blistering, buried treasures, teaming up, stim pack. Remembering your roots is extremely strong in any vertical comp. KDA here is your vertical, scrappy inventions, little buddies, little buddies is really good with super fan egg salvage bin uplink vampirism bulk escort quest escort quest i would say is probably the best just because it's super easy to streak around early early super fan units and and just do well and play around like just play that into like anytime you do like any sort of line that has like early game units or like strong early game units in their final end game board like usually like escort quest is really well with, with stuff like that Prismatic. new recruit jeweled lotus radiant relics lucky gloves buried treasures bulk binary Okay, well, I guess like not really harm assist. Like this is like, when it starts to get bad. Just like here and higher. Just like the really like, the really generic combat augments are strong in this comp. There's not like too much like specific augments for like comps nowadays since like they took away like more of these specific augments and gave like more generic augments for the pool to pick from. That about sums it up for this meta patch update. Yeah.
I am making this like a little bit under 40 hours after the patch was dropped for NA. And this is mostly from my game experience. I've played a lot of games on the patch so far. And yeah, like as well as like looking stats from like multi-region stats for, for the patch so far. Uh, that's it for me. Bye, -bye guys. See you guys in the next video.